prayer tonight to hear your words. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak to their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap tonight, everybody. Thank God for our blessings tonight. 
Thank you very much. We have some gifts tonight. Stand up if your name is called. Don't be bashful. Lazaro McGill. Stand on up. All right, all right. Hey, hey. Got the t-shirt for you. Uh, Nat Martin. Bible answers for you. Stand on up. Nat Martin. Where are you? Nat? All right. Stand on up. Lucrea uh, Sardin.
You want to get all the text you can on a particular subject to get the meaning of that subject. Am I right? Now, if you uh, get, now tell me if this is right or wrong. If you get one subject and you get all the verses you can on it, but then you have two verses that seem to contradict the other 40 verses, do you go with the 40 verses or do you go with the two verses? You go into 40 verses because the two verses that seem to contradict, there's an explanation for it. Because the Bible would never contradict itself. Are right, you with me, friend? Keep that in mind. Because when I preach this subject, sometimes uh, one or two folk might come up and say, Well, I hear you, but this verse says this. And they'll go on all the other verses just because they don't understand the first verse and make the Bible contradict itself. People do that, you know. People will do that, so don't do that and get the wrong understanding. If you take one verse and run with it, you are on your way to being deceived. Can I get a witness here tonight? And I need y'all to pray with me tonight and hear on out because, because I don't need you just to look at me to see if I'm going to, to entertain how I'm going to do. I need you to pray for me. Amen. Don't come up here looking at me, looking, looking like entertain me, entertain me. No, I want some prayers. Amen? Because some of you all want to know the truth on some of these subjects. Can I get a witness, friend? So, but if you really want it straight, you got to pray, Lord, bless me to get it straight. Bless me right now. Help me, Holy Ghost, to understand this. Can I get a witness, friend? Amen. So don't look at me all dreary. If you see somebody that's about to go to sleep, Tell them, wake up with me. Do it before I have to. Amen. <laughs> Is that all right? Is that all right? Do it before I have to. Now, before we go to the screen, let's go to the Bible. Then we're going to let the screen kind of review of it with us. But I want to uh, walk to the Bible for a little bit. Is that all right? Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, bless us as we walk to the Bible. Bless us as we talk about the subject of hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you believe God loves you? Amen. God loves you. He loved you so much that who did he give? He gave Jesus Christ, friend. He gave Jesus Christ. Now, once you hear of this subject, you will love God more once you hear this subject tonight. Because it will let you know that God is truly a fair judge and he is a God of love. Tonight, we're going to see... We're going to find out the location of hell. We're going to find out how long you will burn if you didn't study the lesson. And we're going to find out who will burn longest in hell. We're going to find out when will it start and so forth. Is that all right? Okay, go with me to your Bibles and begin in Revelation. Now, Revelation is a book. Uh, John is looking into the future with some of these things here. And Revelation 20... And let's look at verse 9. Now we're going to see who's smart here tonight, Brother Keith. We're going to see who's smart out here tonight. Verse 9. And they went up on the breath of the way and compassed the camp of the who? About and the beloved city, and fire did what? From God out of heaven, and did what? And devoured means to eat up. Now, friends, has this happened yet? You see fire coming down yet? And where does this fire take place? According to the middle part of verse 9. The earth. You see that? The earth. And then look at verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the what? And brimstone where the what? And false prophet what? Now we know that if you use your common sense on this one, this is in the future. John is seeing all this in the future. The beast and false prophet aren't in hell yet because hell has not begun. They are getting ready to deceive. Amen. They could be in hell if they're about to deceive. And, continue on in verse 10, and shall be tormented day and night forever and what? Now, folks will take this one test in a couple.
are full of others, and they'll run with it, and they think that hell lasts forever and ever and ever without end, even though 182 texts make it clear that hell will come to an end. 182 texts in the Bible, and we're going to look at a lot of them uh, tonight. We're not going to look at 182, amen, but we're going to look at the good ones to let you know that forever in the Bible does not always be time without end. You may walk out of here tonight saying, that preacher preached forever. Did you mean forever? Or did you mean a long time? But they held hell forever. If you look at the big in, at insert in the lesson, it actually talks about how forever is used at least 56 times with events that have already ended. Jonah said he was in the belly of the well for how long? Three days and three nights. But then he turns around and Jonah 2, 6 and says he was in, he was in there, he was there forever. So that forever actually meant three days and three nights. But it seemed like a forever. Now, when it says here, day and night, forever and ever, in the original, it just simply means as long as it lasts. As long as it lasts. Now, you know it couldn't be forever and ever like we think if you read the other verses, because verse 9 says, fire came down from God out of heaven and did what? Devour means to eat up. And then, if you go on, to Revelation 21, what does John say? And I saw a new heaven and a what? Now hell is going to be the whole earth on fire. Am I right? If you said less, you know that. He saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were what? How do you think it was passed away? It was burned up. That's to let folk know right there. Hell is not forever and ever and ever like folk think. Not the burning of it, but the results of it will be forever. Now, I know we sin and make God mad, amen? But you think God's going to be so mad that he's just going to burn folk in hell forever and ever and ever and ever while the good folk are in heaven praising God. Friends, I, I can't even praise God. I know somebody got lost and, and somebody said, we're going to have a good time praising God as we look out and see my enemy there burning. Come on. You won't be able to praise God when you know your, your grandchild or your child that didn't make it is burning while you're praising God and, and they're burning and never dying, never being destroyed, just constantly burning. How you going to praise God? And friends, that belief that hell is burning on and on and on actually came from a pagan belief. Came from the Persians and crept into the Christian church. And, and, but, but God said the ways of sin is death, not eternal life in hell. And God so little for that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Perish means you gone. Either you have life in Jesus or you have death with the devil. The devil and sinners will not live forever like those who accept Christ. Not even in hell. Otherwise, sin will still be around. Sin would never be destroyed. Are you all with me, friend? The devil would still be around. And you know, the thing belief was that good can overcome evil. Evil can overcome good. So God can't kill the devil. So the only thing he can do is make them burn forever. Friend, I believe God can kill the devil. And he will burn that rascal up in hell. What does the Bible mean when, when it says unquenchable fire? Unquenchable fire is a fire that man can put out. But God can put it out when he gets ready. We're going to look at the text to prove this. I gave you a mouthful, but I'm going to let you look at the text. But an unquenchable fire is a fire that man cannot put. I remember I was in school and I had a great big beautiful afro. A boy got jealous of it put my hair on fire. Now that's not the reason why I'm bald now, but amen. <laughs> put my hair on fire. I was all like, ah, put this in your hair, get on fire. Your hair is on fire. Thank God, friend, that it was not an unquenchable fire. Can I get a witness, friend? Thank God it was not an unquenchable fire. It was put out. <laughs> but let me tell you something, friend. This fire will only be put out when God gets ready for it to be put out. 
Are you all with me, friend? And everybody, the way most Christians believe, sad to say, because they didn't really investigate it, but thank God many are trying to investigate it now. Sad to say, uh, many Christians believe that God uh, just throws everybody in hell and everybody goes the same at the time. The devil, you, everybody, if you don't accept Christ, you're all just thrown in hell. If you don't accept Christ, and you're all wearing the same at the time. No matter what the sin. Now, now, this man right here, and this man right here, Elder Jenkins and then Brother Kim. Now, both of them, now they, they're good people, but both of them committed a crime. They killed somebody. This man, though, he dies six years before Elder Jenkins dies. Now, God throws them both in hell, but he has burned six years longer than Elder Jenkins. Just because he died before Elder Jenkins. Does that make sense? That you burn longer just because, based on whether or not you died later or died earlier. That doesn't make sense, friend. That's why everybody will not burn the same length of time. Who do you think will burn the longest in hell? The devil, because he's the father. Now don't you insult yourself and say, I'm going to burn the same length of time with the devil. You think God will be a fair judge to do that? A wicked judge. We have a lot of corrupt judges here in the world. How many of you agree? Yeah. A wicked judge will give you a sentence. He'll say, you did this, five years left. You did this, six years left. And you know, you have some people that are good people, but they never accepted Christ. They can't go to heaven because they never accepted Christ. But you think God's going to let them burn as long as the devil? They're going to burn, but they're not going to burn as long. You see, what, what, what I'm trying to say is the ways of sin is death, not eternal life in hell fire. Are you all with me on this, friend? Now, look at this. Look at this. Go with me now. And we're going to even repeat it again for those who may not have got it. Go to the left, but don't drive too far. Go to Jude. The small book in the Bible. Now y'all hear me out on this from the end and you're going to rejoice at the end of this. You're going to see everything I said. I'm able to back it up from God's word. Is that alright? Jude is a little small. It's just right next to the Revelation. It's right next to the Revelation. Jude 7. Jude 7. Jude 7. Right next to the Revelation. Do you have it? Do you have it? Say amen. amen. All right. Jude 7. Now, you don't have to be afraid of hell if you have Jesus in your heart. Always remember that. Friend. God's not willing that any should perish. That's why he died. Look at verse 7. Even as what? Now, let's read verse 6 first. Because I want you to catch something. And the angels which kept not their what? But left their own what? He had done what? Preserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. So they are what everybody reserves. When you reserve something, is it going on now? Now, look at verse 7. I want you to think real quickly with me. Even as Sodom and what? And this is about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after the strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of what? It's Sodom and Gomorrah burning down. But yet the Bible says he turned fire. It's, I'm telling you, in the Bible, when it speaks of hell and burning and so forth, it means as long as it lasts. Now, what exactly did that eternal fire do to Sodom and Gomorrah? Turn with me, don't turn too far, but turn with me in your Bible to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, don't go too far, just one or two books, really. Second Peter, one or two books. Second Peter 2 and verse 6, I believe. What did that eternal fire do inside of the Lord? Now, do we have it? Second Peter, don't go too far. Second Peter 2 and verse 6. Are you with me, friend? All right. And turning the what? Of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah into what? So that eternal fire turned them into what? Now, some folks believe when you go to hell, you're just going to soul form. Friends, Jesus said he's able to destroy.
destroy soul and body. Obviously, you're going to hell in body form, otherwise there'll be no ashes. Because if you went to hell looking like Casper the Friendly Ghost, there would be no ashes. Are you with me, friend? There would be, do you, do you get me, friend? All right, there would be no ashes. Now look at verse, uh, uh, first, second Peter 2, verse 6. Look at verse uh, 9. Now look at verse 9. I love this. Boy, the Lord know how to do what? Deliver the godly out of temptation. Somebody say amen. amen. But look at this. And to do what? Preserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be what? Amen. So the unjust are reserved. That means are folk burning now or are they reserved to judgment to burn? But you got
Now look at this. Go to Psalms before we go to the screen. Go to Psalms. Just take it to the Bible. You all enjoy this tonight? Are you with me? Psalms 37. Then we're going to go to the screen. And then we can go quicker to the screen because I'm already hitting it with you now. Hitting this with you now. Psalms 37. Look at this. And we want to look at, uh, look at verse 11. It talks about what the meek shall inherit the earth. Not this earth, but the earth made new, of course. But look at verse 10. For yet, for a little while, and the wicked shall what? Yea, thou shalt diligently consider him, diligently consider his place, and this shall what? Now look at verse 9. For evildoers shall be what? Does that sound like you're going to live forever? But those that wait for the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Of course, the earth made new. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see something real quick with me. Verse 20. And look how the Bible agrees with itself when you study like it's supposed to be studied. Verse 20. But the wicked shall what? And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the what? They shall consume and to smoke they shall what? See the wicked turn to ashes? Then you have smoke and they're gone away. Does that make sense? They're gone away. Somebody said, well, what about Abraham and Lazarus in the bosom? Well, first of all, that's a parable. Abraham is not big enough to have somebody in his bosom. And then uh, the man in that parable, the man that asked for a cup of water to quench his thirst. Friends, let me tell you, when hell burns, you won't be thinking about water. And it would not be able to quench your thirst. It was a parable. Can I get a witness? And you don't judge the doctrine by a parable. It was a parable. Abraham, and, and once you're in heaven, you can't communicate with anybody in hell and have a conversation. How are you going to have a conversation when you burn? You're going to be yelling. You're not going to have time to talk intelligently. So that's a parable, Frank. That's a parable. And I want you to study when you get home. If you did, study the pig sheets. And it talks further more about everlasting. Somebody mentioned that verse, everlasting punishment. Uh, but really it's everlasting. It says everlasting punishment. Uh, it is not, it does not say everlasting punishing, but everlasting punishment. And the everlasting punishment for sinners is death. If it said everlasting punishing in that Matthew text, then it would have been on and on and on. But the way to sin is death. The only thing forever about hell is the punishment, and that punishment is actually death. The ways of sin is what? And the death is eternal, not the burning. Somebody would say, praise God. God's going to be able to get ready to tell him. He's going to get ready to him. Amen. And if anybody believes that the hell is forever, they're telling God, I don't, I don't believe you get ready to tell I don't believe you get ready to tell Because it's still going to be right over there burning. Friend, it's a trick of the devil. Now, if you weren't convinced of that, and I hope you were, because you saw it in God's word, amen. And God's word would never contradict itself. Here is the scripture text. When will the wicked be punished in fire? You should know it by now. The Lord knows how to do what? Reserve the unjust until when? So when will they be punished? As soon as they die or on judgment day? Judgment day, friends. All right, isn't that beautiful? When it is the judgment day, uh, if you look at Matthew 13, 40, uh, when you get on Raven now, you'll find that, uh, well, that says the sanctuary judgment, the wood day. Last day, John 12, 48. But Matthew said, in the end of the world. Is that clear? So hell comes to the end of the world. Now, since the wicked are not to be punished in hell until judgment day, at the end of the world, how many lost souls are in hell now? Not even. So that means the preachers, when they get up at funeral time and they know somebody didn't really accept Christ and played around with the Lord, they don't have to lie and say, Oh, I see them in heaven right now. And they know in their heart, they, 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 they might know they're not going there, but they're afraid to say they're going to hell. Are you all with me? 
Since the wicked do not go to hell, fire and death, where do they go? And we got a lesson on that. He should be brought to the grave and should remain in the tomb. And we'll tell you when exactly uh, the Lord will wake them up for judgment day. That's the lesson coming, another amazing fact. We're rewards of the righteous and the wicked receive. Where's your sin is what? Yeah. The gift of God is what? The eternal life. Where the sin is what, friend? Yeah. So, friend, you mean to tell me that if a sinner lives forever and ever in hell, he will never get the wages of sin? He'll be in hell and forever and ever, but the wages of sin is death, not hell fire. Are you all with me? Hell brings it about. The gift of God is what? The eternal life. Which death did the wicked receive in the fire? Revelation 21 and verse 8. Which death? The Bible calls it in Revelation 21 verse 8 the second death. So hell, isn't it something how hell is called the second death? Does that sound like life to you? All right. Which is the second death? That's of course is hell. I told him to write that. Turn that thing up. I want y'all to hear these special effects. Amen. We're going to have to work on this. Well, we'll work on it a little later. All right. Many people say that souls never die. But what does God say? Ezekiel 18, 4. We have a lesson coming on that. And verse 20 says that the soul that said it, it shall what? Die. die. Friends, don't ever think that you have a soul that automatically lives forever and ever and ever. It's no automatic thing. The gift of God is eternal life. God's fire does what? Destroys. What does the fire do to the wicked? You saw it? They're going to come and try to contest the city of God and fire comes out from God in heaven and does what to them? Devours them. Which means to what? Devour means what? Or to what? I'm looking for up, but you all got it right. Perish, destroy. Good class. Amen. How big will the fire be, and what will it do to the earth and the elements? Milk and what? And it'll all burn up. The elements shall milk with what? And the earth and the works of the very end shall be what, everybody? Burn up. How did Malachi describe the fire? We read about it. He said, they will burn as a what? Well, that's going to be pretty hot. Every time it gets hot outside, I think about it and how I don't want to go. Amen. Every time the air conditioning acts up and goes out, I think about it. Sometimes that little breaker breaks and you have to put it back. I think about it and I don't want to go. Amen. Every time I'm trying to get a suntan, I think about it. <laughs> I don't want to go. Amen. Can I get away with it? Amen. <laughs> All that do wickedly shall be what? Double. And it will burn them what? Up. Oh, see, God's not crazy about hell anyhow. You think he wants to keep it around? It will leave them neither what? That's what Malachi says in fourth chapter. Will the fire finally go out? It will finally go out, friend, because Isaiah said there shall not be a cold or warm act, nor a fire to set before it. It will finally go out. What is left when the fire goes out? You got it. Look at somebody said ashes. Turn your neck. Turn your neck. Come on. Wake up with me now. Turn your neck. Wake up with me now. Amen. Ashes. Ashes. Good to see you, sis. Wow. Good to see you. Pray for her mother. Her mother was a good seminar student, was here Sunday. And I saw her today, she had a stroke. And we our prayers are with you. Uh, pray for her mom. Prayers are with her. The mom is, is doing all right though, for the most part. Doing all right. I believe she's gonna kick in. And uh, the devil is busy, but God is busy, right? Amen. Amen. David in the song said that in a little while the wicked will not be found, no matter how diligently you won't find them. Why won't you find the wicked? They're going to be gone in the smoke. They still consume away. That's why you can't find them. They'll consume away. How long will the wicked suffer in fire? Revelation 21.
but it doesn't have to be that way, amen? So God says, come as you are, but you can't go to heaven as you are, amen? Will sin ever rise up again after it's destroyed in hellfire? How many of you think sin will rise up again? The Bible says, you might want to jot that down, but it says affliction will not rise a second time. Somebody get a little hand clap for that Amen. Get a little hand clap. Affliction must not destroy the devil of the sin. We don't have to worry about sin anymore. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? All right. What will God do after sin and sinners uh, are destroyed? What will God do? Of course, he said, behold, I pray to what? A new heaven and then a what? Now that's going to be a beautiful sight to see, friends. After God destroys this world, we're going to be in the holy city, and we're going to see God creating everything new again. We're going to see the grass coming. We're going to see the birds flying. We're going to see all the grace of God. We're going to see Him actually at work, friends, creating everything new. Don't you want to see that? It's going to be a beautiful thing, friends. And God Himself will dwell with us. Somebody say it. That's going to be beautiful, friends. He's going to dwell with us. And Jesus invites us to live in His fabulous kingdom. And the question is, will you accept Christ? Will you make sure you put God first? Will you make sure you put His Word first so, so that you will not miss out on the mansion that God This is 
why right now there will be no punishment of the wicked until the day of judgment at the end of the world. Is that true or false? Now we really made it plain tonight so you all should get this. Some of you all are getting it very well. Question number two, when the wicked die, they go into the graves to remain and to call forth by the power of God unto the resurrection of damnation. Is that true or false? You can read it again. Matter of fact, I'm going to save a little voice for tomorrow, so you read the next one. T or F. Listen closely. If you don't know what pray, the Lord help me, you help me. Alright, question number four. The fire that destroys the wicked comes from God out of heaven at the end of the thousand years. And you'll know the answer for that if you study that pretty good. You've got to study behind you. Question number five. Okay, you can read that. If you don't feel like reading aloud, just read in your mind. Say your voice as well. Been saying amen so much, it might get tired. Of <laughs> All right. Okay, are we ready? Okay, beautiful. True or false? All right, how many of you got that? Let me see. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Question number two, true or false? All right. Amen. Question number three, true or false? Amen. All right, amen. Beautiful. How many of you got that right? Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Question number four, true or false? All right, true. Revelation 20. Read that again to get on. Revelation 20. All right, question number five, true or false? All right, true. Amen. That is true. Beautiful. All right, our deacons, we need you to collect the envelopes, fill them out, collect them. If you want a donation in there, fill up the envelope. And as you leave tonight, remember to turn in the Bibles, pick them back up tomorrow night. And uh, we thank you for doing that. And uh, some of you are on the way. Uh, these days are going by quick, and you are on the way. All right, all right. We get to need your help on that. Don't forget tomorrow night, seven fifteen, uh, and uh, we're going to try to get you out like we normally do, about eight twenty, eight twenty-five at least. <coughs> tell somebody about this seminar tomorrow night. How many of you all want to tell somebody about the seminar tomorrow night? Let me see your hand. Tell somebody. Yeah, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Somebody needs to know. If you got folks now turning away from God just because they have a misunderstanding of hell right now. And the other lesson tomorrow night is going to blow your mind as well. All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's collect all these wisdom folks. All right. Once again, if you, if you have a special prayer request, you can write that on the envelope because we will pray over those envelopes as well. We're living in hard times. And I know we all need prayer. Can I get a witness? Amen. When I think of these hard times, so whatever you're going through, think about heaven. Let's stand up, everybody. Whatever you're going through, think about heaven. Grab somebody by the hand, touch somebody by the shoulder. Once again, it's been a great class tonight. And uh, I believe that you all are pretty receptive to this. God bless you for that. Brother Duncan close us out. Brother Duncan just pray with us right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for your love, your kindness, and mercy. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Be with us in keeping guidance, grant us travel and mercy. Open our hearts that we may hear what you have to tell us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Bring us back to this place tomorrow. Amen. We thank you for your love and kindness. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.